we're walking and we're talking. The ELRS thing that I've been working on, so far so good. And the, the refresh rate, the fast refresh rate, took a little while to get used to. I was surprised though, there wasn't a really big drastic difference between Crossfire 150 hertz and the ELRS 250 hertz. You start to feel a difference at around 500 hertz refresh rate. So when you get up that high, you really start to notice the difference in the uh, response, the speed that the quad responded. Flying Crossfire for a while and switched over to ELRS. Flying ELRS for a couple of days, I actually figured a few things out. One watt in ELRS is super, super powerful and you don't really need that much power. So I've dropped it down to around 250, 250 milliwatts. ELRS turned out pretty easy to use. It's uh, really, really simple to set up. You know, both your transmitter and your receiver have Wi-Fi capability. I've also been running the Bluetooth option on the radio for Simmon and makes for a really good wireless option. So with ELRS being the most modern control link system and the most versatile and open source. The thing with ELRS, it's open source. So a lot of different manufacturers and uh, it's keeping the price down. You can find receivers anywhere and you can get both diversity receivers and you can get also the single receivers. Yeah, so even though ELRS feels a bit scary and a bit wild and there's a lot of things to do and binding phrase and all these types of things, it's really good because it's redundant in the sense that if you've tried one way to bind your receiver to your transmitter and it doesn't work, you have at least two or three other options to try. And I guarantee you, you will get your receiver bound to your transmitter. So all of that said, being open source, having all of those receivers available, it only makes sense to switch to ELRS.